Hello and welcome to the first podcast for the Will County Health Department. This month's topic, we're going to talk about early childhood and mental health since we had our 16th annual mental health conference on May 31st at Lewis University. I'm Rebecca Anderson, the All Our Kids Early Childhood Network Coordinator, and I'm going to talk briefly about AOK Network. It is an early childhood collaborative. We get together once a month with providers in the area that work prenatally up to the age of five with children and families. We do have some guests today that I will explain in just a few seconds. AOK started in Will County in 2004. Um, So not only do we meet every month, but we also have subcommittees. The subcommittee is um, Early Childhood Mental Health, which is our focus and topic of today. So I have with me Arielle Jones. She's a family engagement specialist, so she can introduce herself. Hi, I'm Arielle Jones. I'm the family engagement specialist with AOK, and I've been with... AOK Network since March 2023. All right. And we have um, Mary Valerius, which is one of our partners. So like I said earlier, we uh, work with providers in the area. We focus on uh, trainings and different things in the community. And so we have with me today Mary Valerius from Child and Family Connections, and she's going to explain what she does in the community. Hi. Thank you, Rebecca and Ariel. Yes, I am an infant and early childhood mental health consultant with Child and Family Connections 15, which Child and Family Connections 15 is part of the state's early intervention program. And I don't know, do you want me to go into what early intervention is now or later? Absolutely. Go ahead and tell us. It's very important for the audience. Yes, absolutely. Early intervention is the state's program for children and families, so children age zero to three who have developmental delays or concerns or you know concerns that their parents may have about their development, they can reach out to our office and we can have their child evaluated to determine if there are some concerns with their development. And then from that point on, we can bring in some therapists to work directly with the family in home EI, you know, is an, is an in-home program, and it's a parent coaching program. So these, these therapists will come into the parent's home, work directly with mom, with dad, with caregivers to support them in supporting their child's development. All right. Thank you. So our first question today for Mary is, what is early childhood mental health? Because, you know, maybe a one-month-old doesn't have mental health. What does that exactly mean? Sure. And I think that's a really good question. It can be kind of confusing. I think we tend to think of mental health. When we do think of mental health, we think of adults. We don't necessarily think of babies. And I'm going to begin with, I'm going to share with you the expert definition of infant and early childhood mental health, which is the developing capacity of the child from birth to five years old to form close and secure adult and peer relationships, experience, manage, and express a full range of emotions, and explore the environment and learn. All of this in the context of family, community, and culture. So that's the long-winded definition that the experts have come up with. In more layman's terms, infant mental health It's more about the connections between a child and their caregivers. And that's what what lays the foundation for what we later know of as mental health. Mental health in a one-month-old absolutely is going to look different than it does in in an adult. And often with children, we see things like behavior concerns that may be the first, you know, red flag or indicator for families that there may be a mental health concern. But it, it's 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 tricky to, des- to describe, I guess, as far as, right, we think of depression, we think of anxiety. This all looks very different in a baby, and it's very much, and a young child, and it's very much related to the secure adult relationships, the attachment with the caregivers in their lives that sets the foundation for what we later think of as mental health. 
So I don't know if that makes sense or if you have any more specific questions about that. that no, that's good. And actually, it's kind of like the opposite because I'm glad you said foundation. It kind of lays the foundation. So hopefully they have secure attachments and later on happy and healthy adult. Sure. Or in our case for early childhood, we're looking at, you know, getting ready for kindergarten. So making sure that they're developing in that way. On May 31st, we had a conference at Lewis University for the Early Childhood Mental Health topic where 133 professionals attended. So I'm going to ask Mary, since she was on the planning committee and she took a lead in it the past few years, maybe more, I'm not sure how many, (laughs) uh, but Mary's been doing this quite so many years with us. You know, what are some of the topics and how that relates to our subject? And take it away, Mary. All right. Happy to. Yeah, it, this has been a big project, and it absolutely takes a team of people to come together to put this together. Um, so I'll go through our presenters that we had that day. As you said, it was for 133 early childhood professionals. And we began the morning with Maggie Mosca, who presented on the intricacies of attachment. And Maggie is the director of Caregiver Connections, which is, which is another really amazing statewide program that we have here in Illinois on um, supporting early childhood professionals. And attachment is really just a lot of the, the, the basis of mental health uh, for children and parents and understanding that, you know, attachment relationship and the impacts of that and challenges, you know, that was a lot of, she just gave a really great overview for all the professionals who attended. And then from there, we had our morning breakout sessions. We had five different sessions, and I'll just go through those with for you. Self-compassion was one of the sessions, and it was presented by Jacqueline Blackburn, who is an LCSW and an early childhood mental health consultant. Then we also had Circle of Security Parenting, and Andrea Cozy was our presenter. Andrea is a MSW. Another big topic in this field is the next session, which is on, it was on, is it sensory or is it behavior? So when you're seeing challenging behaviors from young children, I know, especially in early intervention, that's a question that does come up quite frequently. And we had Shannon Keating, uh, who is an MS, present on that. Then we had in early childhood mental health in the context of families and relationships. And that was presented by Tina Mackey and Cheryl Habib from NAMI, Will County. And then we also had social emotional development post-COVID and Susan Mrazek. I think I pronounced that wrong. (laughs) Mrazek, (laughs) who is a PhD, infant early childhood mental health consultant presented on that important topic, which has been huge since COVID and understanding the impact of you know, how has COVID impacted early young children's mental health and impacted families? Our afternoon breakout sessions was facilitating attuned interactions, simplified, and that's shortened version of that is called the FAN, which is an amazing framework that came out of Erickson Institute and Jessica Brimmer, who is an MSW and also an infant early childhood mental health consultant, presented on that topic. We had another topic on excessive screen time and brain development by Melissa McNichols, who's an MS, and um, another huge topic that I think parents often have a lot of questions about. Executive functioning was another presentation, and that was presented by Amanda Scott, who is a licensed clinical professional counselor. And then we had a nurturing parenting program, which was presented by Gwen Vanna, who is an LCSW, and Falana Coleman Zamora, who's also an LCSW. So a lot of really important, like heavy material that was presented in this conference. Hard to imagine that we kind of packed all that into one day, but (laughs) we did. 
Yeah, we do that every year. So pretty much, <laughs> it's, it's a good conference. I always say it gets sold sold out. Um, we don't charge, but you know we see it fill up really fast. Mm-hmm. And anybody can attend throughout the whole state. We have people coming, you know, driving in for a couple of hours. Uh, one of the sessions that I attended, Ariel and I run around and try to get the. Uh, training all organized and everything and questions that day at Lewis University come up but uh, I did get to attend a little bit of the excessive screen time and brain development which was huge which I wish I could sit in the whole session but so excessive screen time and brain development was really interesting topic it's not recommended that children under the age of two watch television however you know it's really easy plop the kid down I got to make dinner that sort of thing um, in front of the TV and that's why there's the other you know there's all these little kid shows on sure. TV or right? all the iPhones and tablets these days sure. I mean it's really yeah. you know it's part it's- of our culture Absolutely. So, but it was really interesting to see. Uh, She didn't have an activity that day, and she had um, people just playing games like board games, shoots and ladders, Candyland, all those little kid games that you remember in your, you know, childhood. And um, so, a group of people, or you know, five people, were playing games, and then the other side of the room. They were supposed to just play on their phone, like little games that you play on your phone when you're bored, right, at home. And you could just see from, you know, just playing a game. She didn't have to teach or do anything. Everybody was having so much joy and happy and interacting with playing these games, uh, the board games, like Candyland and Shoots and Ladders. And then the other side of the room, they were kind of just looked like they were kind of bored and they were not interacting with anybody and they were just on their phones. <laughs> so yeah. you can kind of just see it. It was kind of really cool and interesting. So we do offer, not only do we offer these great topics and have these speakers come in, but we also do professional development credits for these professionals. So I'm going to let Mary kind of talk about the credits that we offer for this training. Sure. And this is one of the areas where it absolutely takes a team to get all of these credits, these credits approved and um you know, provided for those who attend. We had early intervention credits, and that's my area. So I'm able to get those for the different early intervention therapists who do attend the training. Then we also had mental health CEUs for licensed social workers and counselors. We had gateways credits for early childhood professionals. We had CPDU credits for teachers. CDVP credits for domestic violence professionals, and then nursing CEUs. So quite the list. Not only, you know, I'm kind of biased because I've been doing this since 2004. Uh, We always say the conference is really great, but we do ask for feedback. And so we do have people, you know, suggestions for different topics because, you know, the list, we had a long list of topics this time, but, you know, what are other people interested in or what they like to hear in the future? So I'm going to turn it over to Ariel, but um, some of the feedback that we received from this conference is... Well, I will start by saying this, that I do kind of wish that I could sit in on some of the individual sessions because they sound really interesting. But one perk of Rebecca and I running around and making sure that everything's working as it should is that you do get to hear comments passing by from people. And we also have an evaluation that we give participants at the end, completely voluntary, but we usually get very good feedback on these. And this year, I think, was no exception. Probably some of the most common things that I remember hearing were that the conference was expertly coordinated, people had a wonderful time, and I and I got a lot of smiley faces on the evaluation, so we could definitely take that as a good sign. We had a lot of very knowledgeable speakers, as Mary said, and several people reported that they wanted to be able to take this back to their families and they were excited to be able to use their skills in practice. Some of those things, like Rebecca said, being playing board games, card games. In one of our breakouts, we also did a meditation exercise and we're practicing some coping skills. And these are things that extend past early childhood. So you can really use them anywhere, although primarily Primarily, we do have early childhood professionals. 
Yeah, I'm going to just jump in and say, I agree, Ariel. I wish I could have attended all the sessions. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think that's a problem to have. That's what I thought this year, too. Like, we had so many great ones. How do you decide which pick. one to go to? So in the future, if we had so many great ones, maybe we could split it up from year to year or something like that. Sure. I'm not sure. We're always open to feedback, for sure. Mm -hmm. And sometimes this is something else that happens, I think, because of that. We'll get there the day of, and I'll be sitting there signing people in. And then sometimes people remember what the different presentations are about. And then I'll have a group of like five people who will say, oh, this actually sounds really interesting. Can you switch me to this? Can I do this instead? But that's, I think, the issue. You want to have a lot of topics, but people can't do all the topics. All right. So I'm kind of going to switch gears just a little bit. So you kind of got a, an idea of what early childhood um, mental health is. We talked a little bit about that. We talked about why, you know, we do this conference. Um, there's been great feedback. But um, Mary, can you also tell us um, what caregivers, so we, well, we did kind of, Ariel touched upon it a little bit, like, you know, board games and different things that you can do with your kids instead of just computer, iPad, stuff like that. But what can caregivers do with young children and how will this impact their lives? Which mm. I felt like we kind of touched on it, but mm. you know, maybe. Sure. Um, I'm happy to talk just a little bit more about that. I agree. We, you know, did touch on some of that. Um, I think in my work, one of the primary things is parents need to take care of themselves so they can take care of their children and their mental health. So that, that self-care, that self-compassion that we had as one of the, the presentations, I think is huge for the professionals working in the field, but, but parents to be able to be that source of comfort and regulation for their children. So parents need to take care of their own needs in order to take, help take care of their children's needs. Second is play with your children, interact, spend time with them, you know, with, with babies, Face-to-face -face interaction, the Harvard Center on the Developing Child refers to that as serve and return, where you talk to your baby and give them space to respond to you and then, you know, narrate your day, sing songs, all of those, you know, just fun interactions that parents can do with their kids that don't require fancy toys, that don't really, re don't require electronics. It's really just you you are the most important tool or learning device for your child as a parent, which is why taking care of yourself is so important. I think that's probably my biggest piece of advice would be that time together is, is huge. Sure. That's like the biggest thing in early childhood is the caregivers are the uh, child's first teacher. So mom, dad, yeah. whoever's taking care of that child. So yeah, that's, we think like, oh, our kids are going to go to school and that's where they're going to learn. No, they're oh. learning it all before the age of five. Yes, from brain the development. <laughs> Absolutely. In that eight, from age zero to five. I mean, brain de your child's brain develops so significant, significantly in that time period. And that's when, you know, they're with their parents and, and their early education professionals. And that is enormous. That's laying the foundation for all later learning and mental health and development. And so, yeah, that there's a lot happening in those early years for, for children, absolutely. Yeah, and I think that's why we're all like invested and, you know, people come to the meetings and, and that because that's what we're kind of all about, yeah. so. So Mary, what should a parent do if they have concerns about their children's development? I am glad you asked that, Ariel. So if a parent is concerned about their child's development, they can reach out to our office, the Child and Family Connections office. Our referral coordinator, Leslie, is the person that they would talk to. Her number is 815-768-3730. And she will gather information from them regarding their concerns for their child and then she will set it up so that they can meet with a service coordinator in our office. That service coordinator will reach out to the family, explain all about our program, 
um, and then set up an evaluation with some therapists regard, uh, focused on that parent's primary concern uh, that will come out to their house and meet with them and interact with their child and talk to the parent and learn all about their concerns. And then from there, you know, they'll determine if they are eligible for the program. Children who have a delay of at least 30% in any area are eligible for our program. And then, you know, from there, well, the process will get started as far as getting some therapies to help their child. And I think I said, as I said earlier, our program is about parent coaching. And so parents are highly involved in all of the therapies. It's in home. These therapists are working with the parent to help teach them things they can do to support their child's development. I mean, I, it's a great program. <laughs> so if you have concerns, that would be a great place to call. Um, there's also lots of online resources that are wonderful. I don't know if parents like looking online. I know like zero to three is a great online resource if parents want more information on child development. The CDC has all sorts of information on child development. So if parents have questions about that, you know, there's lots of places to go and learn more. Sure, absolutely. You mentioned the CDC. They have an app you can track your baby they do. on their milestone tracker. So yeah. that's really helpful. Before we close, I just want to thank Mary for you know participating in today's podcast and also being a great partner for us with the conference all these years. And then also thank you to the Joliet Library Digital Media Studio. So a little clap for them. Um, that's where we're uh, doing the podcast out of. And look forward to another other Will County Health Department podcast in the near future with a different topic. So thank you for joining.